This is supposed to represent the globe model looking down from the top. So I have the North Pole represented here and the equator is the outer edge and this represents a city at the equator. So from the equator to the North Pole it's approximately 6,225 miles. I'm using these location reference points to illustrate that as this thing turns the locations that are closer to the center travel less distance than the ones that are further away from the center. On the globe model this part of the city that's right on the equator would be traveling at a little bit more than 1,000 miles per hour but the location right on the North Pole would actually be almost at a standstill. On the globe model the part of the city that's right on the equator would have traveled about 12,450 miles in 12 hours. I have the city at the equator positioned by this tripod pole and the airplane is over there. I'm going to make three motion illustrations using the airplane and that city at the equator. All three of these do not take into account any wind and I'm doing this freehand. I'm not suggesting that this is precise. Okay, so first the airplane is going to fly directly towards where the tripod pole is. I'm going to try and move the airplane approximately half the speed that the city is moving. Flying directly towards the tripod pole. Trying to. Okay, so the airplane has arrived, but the city is over there. So this time, the airplane is going to travel towards where the city will be in 12 hours time, taking off from a runway that is at a near standstill. So once again, I'm trying to move the airplane approximately half the speed of what the city is moving. And by the time the city by the time the city gets there, the airplane can't land because the city is traveling a thousand miles an hour sideways, which would end up in a big crash. In this illustration, the airplane will try and stay on a direct course to the city. However, the ever increasing ground speed underneath the airplane would make it more and more difficult for the airplane to stay on course. Eventually the airplane would start drifting off course and start struggling to keep up with the city. And eventually it would start losing significant ground to the city and not be able to catch it. If you believe that the Earth is a spinning sphere with a moving atmosphere, and if you also believe that the moving atmosphere somehow enables the airplane to fly from the North Pole to the equator in such a way that it's as though the Earth and the atmosphere were not even moving, then I would like to show you something else as well. So what would happen if 500 mile per hour atmosphere would move over here or if this atmosphere would move over to here or if a 25 mile per hour south wind would blow for five days moving this atmosphere to the north do you think people that would be living in this area would be concerned that there's a giant windstorm coming? I don't think very likely and what about oceans? this would be enormous speeds for water and oceans are deep, water is heavy. So what would happen if, the, if this was water 
and these different water speeds started mixing around with ocean currents. Then what would happen? So I did some searching online to see how fast ocean currents are and the fastest I found was I think five point some miles per hour. So anyways guys that's something to think about. You guys have yourself a good day.